It's very fitting we're discussing BYU baseball as we welcome in our first guest of the day. His name is Greg Ravel, the voice of the Cougars, fresh off a trip to Malibu, California, and a sweep of a very good Pepperdine Waves baseball team. Greg, welcome back to Utah. It's a happy welcome back right after a sweep. Absolutely, and the week actually began in Fullerton. Uh, it was a four-game SoCal week, and they won all four games. Of course, you throw on the game they won last weekend at San Francisco. Five-game win streak now uh, for the BYU Cougars. Or just like that, in fifth place now in the West yeah. Coast Conference standings. Top six shape. make the postseason. Yeah, how does the rest of the season now shape up for the Batcats as they look to position themselves for the West Coast Conference tournament? Shapes up well. You'll have a couple in-state games, the midweeks against Dixie tomorrow and then Utah next week. But then it's home series against Pacific, which is the cellar dweller, the WCC. And then a good LMU team. Uh, but uh, BYU's positioning well for the conference tournament now. Uh, I, I think a top four finish is is probable, and a top three finish is possible. Uh, top three might be a bit, a bit too much to ask. We'll see how Portland finishes. That's the team currently uh, in third. But with LMU right ahead of BYU and the Cougs playing LMU to finish the season, it's kind of in their own hands as to where they kind of finish, whether you know they get as high as, as, as four or three. But I, th- I think four looks good. Five's comfy for now, but there's still room to move. You know, we look back – not that long ago, a week ago, and they were in eighth and looking on the outside of the tournament because you have to be in the top six to be in the tournament. What's the difference in this last week to where they were the week before? Well, the funny thing is they're actually playing really good baseball. Even though they weren't winning series, they would lose a series 2-1 but be a squirrely play or two away from winning the series or maybe even taking a sweep. It's been that kind of year. There have been a handful of games you know, kind of that just got away from BYU. Um, those games go BYU's way, a play here or there, and they're looking at an at-large candidacy right now. That's not the situation at this moment, but they're showing now the kind of team that they've kind of been for a while, even though the results weren't always there. But now they've got five in a row, and now they had a sweep uh, on the road. And not only that, the teams in front of BYU both got swept, and so it really was a big, big weekend. When BYU makes it to Stockton, this past weekend that just got played, we'll have a big reason to do with it. Fantastic stuff on the baseball team. Greg Ravel is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Huge weekend in Cougar news as we transition now to basketball. Rudy Williams announces that he is leaving Coastal Carolina, and he will be the point guard, we assume, for Mark Pope in BYU basketball. How does that impact now what this roster is going to look like with a point guard in place? Well, some stability and some reps and experience, you know, at, you know, as a ball handler, which I think is pretty key right now, more than anything else. It's not a Big 12 piece of the puzzle. He's got one season left, right? Uh, so it'll be a transition piece for BYU, but it's really something Cougars, uh, the, the Cougars lacked were reps at that position. They'll have them now. And it's a guy that, you know, once upon a time as a, as, as a lower-level player led the nation in assists. And, and he's got a handful of triple doubles uh, in his past portfolios as well. So clearly he's shown that ability and uh, you know, can be anyone who leads the nation in assists in a collegiate level um, can be somebody who can really help you there at point. And that was a glaring need for BY. Everybody's looking going, man, who's going to play point guard? Alex Barcelo's manned that for so long. So, so let's say that, that he is the solution to that and maybe Dallin Hall coming back from Michigan help there. But what's next for Mark Pope here in this offseason? What does he got to do now? Well, Antoine Davis makes his decision at 1 o'clock today, and BYU's right in the mix, you know, for Antoine. That's that, that that's the next, you know, puzzle to either fit in or stay out that you've got to try and replace. So let's see what Antoine Davis decides to do this afternoon. And then maybe, you know, I, I, I think there's probably some front court, um, you know, depth that, that's needed right now w- with the team. And, uh, you know, there, there are players that we don't know about, the coaches do know about, that they're probably in with. Um, and all these pieces have to fall into place here in the weeks to come. How much do you anticipate the three returning missionaries will factor into this year on the court with Dallin Hall and Richie Saunders and Tools? So, like, how much do you yeah, expect them I, to play? I wish I could say that I know, but it's just such a crapshoot with return missionaries as to who's really ready and what ready looks like and, and, and who can look the best the quickest. But uh, I, I know that there are three players that the coaches were excited about, and I'm excited to watch them, you know, get into the mix. But how much can you really depend on uh, you know, someone in that situation, it's, it rain, remains to be seen. Um, you know, not everyone's TJ Haas. Uh, when he, you know, comes back and you're like, okay, let's get him right in, and there he goes. He's a starter from day one. Uh, but those are the, the, those are special players. That's it. It's interesting. We talked to opposing coaches, and they would just say, TJ Haas, he just starts full speed, and he goes full speed all game. It doesn't matter how many minutes he plays. He never wears out. I think he just – I don't even think he has to work out. If he, it's just genetically, he's a freak that could just go. But that's not always the case for, yeah. for missionaries. Right. This is Mark Pope's first real recruiting class. That you know, these are the guys who recruited in his first class that were missionary guys. 
So so now is he teed up for the next couple of years for guys to be coming back that will be impact players? So this kind of pump is primed and ready to go? I'd like to think so, but with the transfer portal um, scenario, it seems like like best laid plans now are, are you know kind of tossed asunder every year. Um, players you thought you'd have for a few years, you know, go somewhere else. Uh, we saw examples just recently with BYU on how that happened. Guys that they were counting on uh, to be here aren't here anymore. Well, speaking of the transfer portal, BYU football is hoping that they have taken firm advantage of that with Christopher Brooks coming from Cal, Kingsley Suamataia coming from Oregon, Houston Haymuli from Stanford, among others. And now BYU with the returning offense that they have, we're seeing all these preseason polls come out. They're everywhere from number nine to number 16 to number 19. Uh, We've seen them as as low, if you want to call it that, as number 23. But, Greg, where do you expect BYU to show up in the preseason AP Top 25? Because I'm having a hard time putting my finger on where exactly they're going to show up. Is it okay to say anywhere in the poll? Like, and as long as they're in the top 25, I'll take that for preseason pub. I'd be happy. It's with that. been 13 years yeah. since they've been a preseason top right. 25 team. It doesn't mean everything, but it means something, right? And, and a lot of those first few weeks depend on where you were to begin the season. If you're in the poll, you can stay in for a while. Uh, just in the poll would make me pretty happy. Uh, and and although it's a big piece you miss in Tyler Algier. Uh, you know, having to replace a running back is not like having to replace a quarterback, you know, and, and Jaron Hall with as many pieces as he has around him and the O-line the, the way it is, uh, you know, defense, I think there are high expectations for that defense this year. I think it's a, it's a good spot to be in, even though they are missing a really good player in Tyler. I mean, there have been years in, in the last several when BYU is ranked that they weren't in the preseason, and we are up close and see it, and we think, why? Why is nobody paying attention to these guys preseason? What's the difference? Why this year, all of a sudden, all the national pundits are agreeing with us who've had our eyes on them and saying, yeah, this is a really good football team. What's the difference? Well, I, th- I think one component is the, the Big 12 invitation and the knowledge that BYU is transitioning into the Big 12 has heightened the awareness, I think, of the program. And I think people are now looking at this as a program that is now P5, even though it's not official yet, a P5 program. There's more attention to BYU, I think, for that reason. I think even though there was a bowl loss at the end, what BYU did, um, double-digit wins, uh, Tyler Algier being a, a, even just, just, just his draft pick status, um, you know, keeping BYU in the conversation that way. Kalani is a name people know now as well. Kalani's thought of as a, as, as a young, um, top-level coach. All these things kind of come together to make BYU again uh, a, a football name that people are focused on. And then when they look and they dive deeper and they go, oh, who'd they lose? Well, just a really good running back. But look who else is back. I think they go, well, you put all these pieces together, you know, double-digit win team, good coach, um, P5-level talent, uh, great depth, quarterback's back. Yeah, top 25. Greg Rubel is on BYU Sports Nation, the voice of the Cougars. Let's stay with Tyler Algier. We all love the fit that he has for the Atlanta Falcons. But last week I'm thinking, man, Jamal Williams, Tyson Williams, and now Tyler Algier. There are three BYU running backs Mm -hmm. that played here in the last five years now in the league. What does that say about the program and what BYU has been able to recruit here? Yeah, and and they they put the tweet out last week too. You want to go back to even like the six like the number of quarterbacks who've been drafted out of BYU. They're they're as much a quarterback team as any other that Wild. says quarterback factory. So but I like the fact that you can also look around different positions on the field too and see at almost every position there's a BYU player in the NFL. That 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 to me is as important as anything. Uh that that, you know, regardless of the position you pick, you can find someone who went to school here that's playing in the NFL. Not just quarterbacks and not just running backs right now, but all over the field. Uh, that speaks to the true depth of talent and recruiting base that hopefully just gets better and better with BYU playing in the Big 12. You know, we, we always think about quarterbacks when we think about BYU, um, but you and I have been doing this a long time. And when BYU's really good, they dominate on the line of scrimmage, especially on the offensive line. That maybe hasn't been the case in Recent years until very recent. Brady right? Christensen was kind of right. the one that kind of started. Yeah, that, I think that's where I think the next step for BYU is getting those guys back in the league because it had been a long time. And, do you, and I look at this offensive line and go, wow, this may be – I said this last year and I'm saying it again. This could be the best group. You, you were out at spring ball a bunch. We saw each other out there. What's your take on the offensive line? And is BYU back into the offensive line business again? It, it, it feels that way to me. It feels like they could put draft picks out of this line, um, you know, one or two guys in, in years to come. And I think that's when ultimately you're going to say that you, you know, have kind of made it back is when, you know, the, the engine to your offense, which is always going to be O-line, is, is producing top-level talent at, at a regular rate. That would be the, you know, I, I think the next big hope for BYU. 
And it's only two reports, but two reports have Blake Freeland going as a top 20 pick. What a great year. build for him. I mean, I mean, he looks, he looks like a guy that could dominate at, at, at the professional level if his, if his path continues the way it's been to this point. Yeah, the new formula is recruit high school quarterbacks and turn them into offensive <laughs> line. Yeah, it's just crazy. His story is crazy. But uh, when you can put athletes on the O-line, uh, guys who've been able to play other positions, I think that's a good sign. So, Jaron Hall, um, does he go out after this next season? And if he does go out... What's his potential? High, how, how high can he be in the NFL draft? Well, I, I want to see, I guess, from Jaron what we all wanted to see from Zach, which was let, let, let's get a full season of football out of him um, because the quarterback position at BYU, we've talked about it before, it's been the exception rather than the rule that a guy is a 12- or 13-game starter. Health has been such an issue for BYU quarterbacks. And again, for Jaron, it was last year, right? And, and so can you get a full season? out of Jaron Hall? Can you get a 12 or 13 game year out of him? If, you, if he gives you 12 or 13 games, he'll show us and, and uh, you know, the NFL world and anyone else who cares to see um, an exceptionally talented uh, sure. player at that spot. Again, but I, I think it's just about can you get him out there all season? Yeah, if he's healthy, don't be shocked to see another double-digit win season. Uh, that's, that's what it's all about. Hey, behind that line, he ought to stay healthy behind that line, right? <laughs> but I, he's the kind of guy, too, that's not going to just want to stay camped behind that line, right? It, his, his, the beauty of his game is how much he can do for you downfield. Sure. With right that now. line, I'm going to line up a fullback. <laughs> we're going to put, put Greg at tailback, no. and he's going to rush for 1,000 yards. <laughs> so we're in good shape. Well, and, and back to the point about missing Tyler Algier, yeah, it's a huge loss. But uh, whether it's this level or the next level, if, if there's good blocking in front of you and good options to take attention away, maybe the position you can maybe, um, you know, deal with attrition with good bodies coming in is running back. And hopefully we see that this year. Greg, great to have you with us. Thanks for the breakdown. Baseball, basketball, and some football. Always good. Thanks, awesome. guys.